Hello everyone, my name is Robin Powell and welcome to my Red Power 2 Feed the Beast Tunnel Borer Frames tutorial thingy. Um, I found myself wanting to set up a bit of automated mining and uh, being still fairly early on in my game, you know, wanting to do it with a minimum of resources um, as a learning experience if nothing else. And um, the various frames tutorials that I found online were either insufficiently detailed or required a truly staggering amount of resources or both. And so I wanted to um, do something that sort of matched my needs at the time. Um, there's a uh, there's a textual document that goes with this. You should find it in the um, video description um, that goes into some more detail and has diagrams and so on. Between the two you shouldn't have any problems setting this up. Um, first let's talk about uh, the resources required to build this. Um, so the expensive things are the frame motors. Um, they don't actually cost that much to make themselves. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, some iron and some brass which implies copper and tin and then some blue alloy which is silver and some more copper and blah blah blah. Um, the expensive part is this diamond draw plate that's used to make the fine copper wire. Uh, to create a diamond draw plate, you need a diamond block and a diamond handsaw, which totals 11 diamond. Uh, once you've broken down the uh, diamond block, if you convert them all the bits and pieces back into diamond, you'll get um, six diamonds back, but you still need the 11 to start with. So that that <coughs> is the expensive part of this operation. Um, but given that, I mean, that's just you need that just to do any frames, anything. Given that, I tried to keep this as uh, as minimal as possible. As such, it's not you know it's it's not a great machine, and I'm going to build it up over time and do more tutorials. Um, there's a lot of uh, manual labor that you have to do with this machine, but you can make it with very little resources. So, I'm pull out my notes and get to work on this guy. Um, so first, we need. Uh, we need sort of a frame superstructure here. Um, I want to talk a bit about frames in general. So frames uh, stick to um, other Minecraft blocks. Um, and in particular they stick to frame motors, and frame motors can be used to move frames around. Um, the uh, frames will stick to adjacent blocks on all sides. So for example, that frame is going to be stuck to that ceiling and I need to fix that. The um, There are special micro blocks in Red Power 2 um, called covers which are used to prevent that stickiness. So if there's a cover on the edge of a if there's a cover on the edge of a frame, which we'll put on now just for demonstration, oops, if there's a cover on the edge of a frame it won't stick. So right now if we uh, send this if we send this uh, machine into a tunnel as soon as which we couldn't because it doesn't have anything, but if we sent it into a tunnel, as soon as that got adjacent to a wall, it would stop because the frame would try and drag the wall along with it, and it's, you know, it's a wall. It's not going anywhere, so that's not going to work. Um, however, if we put a cover on it, like so, then uh, any side that has a cover on it will no longer stick to the walls. Now, there are also microblocks called panels. Um, and panels are used for, um, well, while frames will stick to whole blocks, they don't stick very well to things like torches and, and other small objects. And in fact, you can't place most, uh, you can't place most sort of um, <coughs> mini blocks, if you will, like uh, torches and levers and so on, directly on frames. You need to have something flat like that to put them on. So that's what panels are for. Panels go on the frames and then you put on your control circuits and your levers and so on and so forth. Um, so the first step here is to make a working uh, is to make a working what's called an inchworm motor. Now the tricky part um, with frames is that the uh, frame motors do not move themselves. Uh, basically, the the frame motor stays still and shoves everything around it, um, which makes things a little bit tricky. So uh, first we got some power, and we have 
one frame motor and two frame motor. And this is a wire that will connect the top frame motor so that they both have power. Uh, now normally uh, with Red Power 2, um, <coughs> power flows... I'm just going to stop to give this battery some, this battery box some more batteries. Um, power uh, actually will flow through all Red Power 2 um, uh, machines. Um, the reason that we need the reason that we need the uh, the jacketed blue alloy wire up here to get this uh, to get this guy working is that on uh, frame motors the one thing that won't work is trying to get power to flow through the arrow the arrow you see there that's where it will cause uh, th that's that's where it causes things to move so um, in this particular case we're actually going to be putting the arrow down Oops. okay so um, you see that shape there. Um, that um, that shape tells you where the arrow is. The arrow is always above, you know, on the far side of the rounded end of the shape. And so the arrow is underneath right there. And the arrow is always pointing in the direction of this uh, sort of white area here on that shape. Um, so the arrow is now on the underside and pointing that way down the tunnel, which is what I want. I'll show you that just to demonstrate. See, arrow down and pointing that way. So the reason that we need that extra cable there for power, it actually makes this whole thing a lot more complicated, is that um, because the arrow is down, normally you could, um, normally the power would flow from the battery box into this motor and then up to that motor, but because the arrow on the top where the motor is down, that's the one surface where it can't receive power. Um, because that's sort of its, you know, active um, surface that, that manipulates the environment. Come on. There we go. Okay, so um, the two motors are facing each other and they're both, um, so the top one is, has the arrow on the bottom and the bottom one has the arrow on the top and they're both uh, pointing that way. Um, and let's see, do I have it with me? No, okay. Ah, no, there, there we go. Um, so here's a lever just for a uh, just for sort of demonstration purposes, you can see you can get a basic idea of how the interim drive works here. So, as I mentioned, the motors don't move themselves. So, if I activate this motor here, um, it's going to move the arrow. And let me see if I can get you to see the arrow here. Uh, stand on this guy for a second. Yeah, so the arrows up and point to the right, and so what happens is the arrow, the way the motors work is that whatever's touching the arrow moves in the direction of the arrow. So the only thing that was touching the arrow was this guy, and he moved in the direction of the arrow, and that's fine. Um, um, you'll notice that uh, those two blue dots there mean that this guy is still powered. The reason that that's the case is because red power to... Um, Bluetricity items hold a certain amount of power in their buffer, so we now have a powered um, motor over here, and if we activate it, it moves the things below it in the direction of the, you know, it moves the things against its arrow, which is down, in the direction of the arrow, which is to the right, and everybody moves over one, which is fantastic, that's what we wanted. Uh, I like this. I like this inchworm drive design, which I um, mostly owe to my friend Stephen because uh, it's very easy to understand what it does. Um, okay, so we've got that. So now we're going to uh, set up the uh, the actual boring face of this object here. Keep needing things to stand on. Quick. Okay, so there we go. So these are all um, these are all uh, red tube um, frames, and um, there's two reasons for that. In the front here, we need them to be red tube frames because we're going to actually be, you know, sucking things up with the block breakers and sending them back. Um, but we also need to um, we also need to signal everything. So we're going to go to the back here and set up our control surfaces. So. Um, let me show you the simple one first. Uh, 
So connecting to um, there we go. So there's the chest. The chest um, you can sort of see a little bit has now. Um, you see how there's there's no tube over here, but there is tube over here. That's because the chest is now connected to the tube network. Tube network runs through here. Um, I'm gonna actually open this up to show you. Um, oops, that didn't work. There we go. Tube network runs through here and runs the block breaker. So when the block breakers kick stuff off, it will get shuffled back to the to the um, chest. Okay, so now we um, I'm not actually gonna hook this up. I'm not actually gonna hook this up, but there would be a timer here. Uh, I'm sorry, I need a panel before I can place the timer. Um, as I said before, circuits and stuff don't connect. So there's a panel. Panels are sticky as opposed to covers which are not. So there's a panel, there's the there's the timer. Now you'll notice that the timer is not activating the redstone tube. And the reason for that is that that's just not how it works. <laughs> um, to make th I'm gonna set this to uh, I'm gonna set this to way long here to make it easier to demonstrate. Uh, to make the uh, timer set to the uh, up to the to the rest of the system. Um, well, first of all, we need our panel, and uh, I'm sorry, I need one panel. Thank you. And we need a. Uh, does this actually even work? Oh no, I'm sorry. I uh, I made a mistake on this design. This is not going to work. I don't think. Um, yeah. So to connect. Um, to connect to a uh, to connect back to the uh, to the tube frames here, we need a uh, jacketed wire that goes into the tube system. Um, but then we also need a regular redstone wire to connect to uh, to sort of mediate between the two. And I actually don't have room for that. I'm very sorry. I made a mistake. Okay, so I think I uh, figured out what I uh, what I missed here. Just and we've got our panels. Panel, panel. Yeah, so unfortunately it really does take uh, quite a large amount of space to get a working connection between the uh, between the timer here, which is what's gonna drive the whole mechanism and the uh, and the rest of the system. So, uh, once I place this, the timer should uh, start lighting up the entire frame system here, and that should um, cause the system to go forward. I do want it rather slower, however. Okay, so, whole system lights up, all the rock breakers go off, that gets moved, a second now we should get another it's a 12 seconds so it's gonna be a minute here oops <laughs> that's the problem I accidentally put a regular frame in there instead of a uh, instead of a red red tube frame let's see what we can do about that don't need I actually don't need this to be a red tube frame in fact I don't need either of those to be red tube frames so let me uh, cannibalize here for a second because I don't have another red tube frame on me right right now These, um, I actually never explained this. So um, the frames that are here are actually only here um, to keep the uh, to keep that power um, to keep that power link from falling off. If you don't have a frame here, uh, 
motors only move frames and things directly attached to frames. If you don't have a frame, if you don't have frames here and here, um, you'll actually end up with both the uh, with both the uh, um, power line here and the battery box just sort of slowly sliding off the back, which is not helpful. Okay, so uh, yes. Okay, so now. Without there being a red tube frame here, there was no connection between the uh, front and the back, so the back was pulsing, but the front wasn't. And now we put our panels back. Panel. Panel. And we have our red ally connection, and there we go. There we go. Okay, now it's moving relatively slowly. Now the problem is, um, the problem is that I haven't put the frames on yet. Um, I also want to uh, show you a slightly different design for the rear section here, um, because I like having a uh, for the reasons that you for reasons that you just saw as I was chasing after it. Um, I like having a um, an explicit off switch. And that takes uh, that takes a little bit more control um, control space back here. Unfortunately, it makes the whole thing longer, which I don't like. Um, but what are you going to do? Um, okay, so and things can. Uh, Things can microblocks can go a really far distance when you split them out. There's a panel around here somewhere. I don't know where the hell it went. Uh, I think I just heard it. <laughs> I think I just heard it arrive. Sorry, I'm just gonna put this motor back here. Okay, back with a fresh screwdriver. Fix this guy up. There we go. Okay, they're both facing each other, and they're both pointing to the right. And, uh... For this version, I actually, um... For this version, I actually do need, um, tube frames here, because of where I'm going to put the chest. It's possible I could put the chest elsewhere, but this will do. Redstone tube frame, redstone tube frame, and the chest goes here. Great, okay, so this unfortunately needs um, three at the back, which I'm none too happy with, but that's just the way it works because of that connection that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so panel. Oh, one panel. Thank you. Panel. Panel. Okay, and we need. Okay, so the whole point here is that we can have a lever. A lever can prevent the activation of the. Direction. I think I heard a zombie. <sighs> really, guys? Yeah, I definitely hear a zombie. Hunted down the zombie. Yay. Okay, I was trying to place a lever, which is always harder than I want it to be. 
uh, to get it going the direction I want. Oh, really? There we go. Okay, so we've got a lever. The lever is activated. And that means that we can place the timer. And the timer will not do anything yet. And a red ally wire. And connect to the thing. Okay, so everybody's all connected up now. Now comes the last and one of the most important parts of this, which is that I need to put covers everywhere that might touch a block. Um, that includes um, that includes on top of things. I'm going to have to get up there and uh, get it on top of that frame there, and that frame there, and it also includes underneath things. Need cover, cover, oh, this, is fairly, oh, this is fairly tedious, so I'm going to go make covers and come back just a minute. Alright, we got all kinds of covers. Let's fire this baby up. as you can see. Slurp. Slurp. So, oh, looking good. I won't, uh, won't really know for sure until it's all the way in the tunnel that I got all the covers right, but it looks like we're doing okay. Yeah, you can see that the uh, the um, it's the second pulse that uh, the pulse that brings the uh, top drive forward that actually uh, gets all the uh, all the bricks sucked up into all the blocks sucked up into the breakers. Um, so that's working quite well. Um, now, um, when this thing is done boring out a tunnel, um, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to bring it back to the uh, bring it back to your base here so that you can move it over to the next uh, to make another tunnel which I'll show you how to do now um, for that we, uh, we basically just uh, swap the um, basically swap the sides of things here in the um, in the motor area I didn't actually need to uh, I, I, if that if that uh, if the top motor had been in its usual place or its sort of starting place I wouldn't have actually needed to move it but it wasn't so. Boom, ba, boom, 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 boom. There we go. Okay, so you swap the direction of the motors. Okay, so both motors are facing to the right, and then the uh, things on either side of the motors also need to be moved, unfortunately. That includes the. Uh, Includes the covers on this guy over here. So, okay. So, we've got a battery box, which, by the way, needs some charging. Uh, we've got a. Uh, we've got power. I think this is going to work. I think I can put the panel on first and then put this thing in place. We'll find out. No, apparently not. I guess I, uh, I, guess I need to go over to the other side here so that I can place this panel.
to speed this up a little bit. Now it's going to come back out of the uh, going to come back out of the tunnel here. Now it's also uh, it's also block breaking as it goes. It just doesn't happen to matter in this case because there's no blocks to break. That's not where the block breakers are. Fantastic. And now we're back here. And uh, so to um, move it over, you know, pretending that this hadn't already been all carved up, to move it over uh, to where, you know, towards me um, to carve out a new tunnel, um, all you need to do is um, change the, uh, oh, that actually isn't what I wanted. Yeah, this guy still has power, so let's use that guy. Um, so let's get the arrow. Oh. Did the wrong kind of clicking again. There we go. Okay, so let's get the arrow pointing towards me. There we go. Okay, so the arrow is now pointing towards me. You just run up here with a lever. Manually activate the guy, and as you can see, the entire structure moves forward except that one motor, or rather, moves to the side. And now it's moved over one tunnel, and we just uh, pop this motor off, and uh, you know, put things back in the going forward mode. So you know, these guys get moved over here, and the two motors get stacked up on each other, and basically just put it back the way you started, and now it's one over and you can send it back down the tunnel. I'm not going to bother doing this right now because I'm going to tear it apart for a new design, but um, that should give you the general idea, and uh, I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you guys later.